and welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. I haven't done one of these in a while and the reason why I'm doing this one is it is the Jackathon. If you don't know what the Jackathon is, it is a readathon that is hosted by myself, A Reader's World, and Peyton Reads and I'm so, so excited. Um, this has been a long time in coming. We've been really wanting to do a Halloween themed readathon or just a readathon together in general. So this is really exciting for all of us and it's so exciting to see that some of you have put out like TBR videos or TBR photos on Instagram and it's just so so exciting and so today I'm starting my vlog of the week of the Jackathon. So it is currently the 15th of October and it is 3.03 p.m. Let's just get into my update real quick. Aw Bootsy is like so cute. Oh. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Let's just get into my updates. So, so my first read for the readathon is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is the group book for the Jackathon. And I'm so excited. So basically, I've been wanting to read this book for a very long time. I've had it on my shelf for quite a while, but I've been putting it off until like the movie was announced, like when it was coming out. And then I was going to read it during the summer, but then it was announced that it was coming out in October this week. And I was like, okay. I have to read it in October then. So I've been putting it off until now and we decided to make it our group book. I started reading at midnight. I didn't start the vlog though because I looked awful. But um, I started reading at midnight and I got 50 pages in. So I'll show you where that was. So 50 pages. So 50 pages was this much. So I read it this much last night. And you can see my bookmark. Now I'm on page um, 122. So I've read this much so far day one i have a, a lot of tabs in it um i wasn't originally planning on tabbing it but then some like there's one line and i was like no i have to so i'm currently on chapter eight got my baymax um bookmark i figured this book deals i almost got lipstick on the white book oh no um i figured this book deals with a pretty heavy topic um why not give the caretaker baymax to help me get through this hard time. I'm a nerd, it's fine. I'm really, really enjoying this book. It is so, so good. I'm sending like Julia play-by-play -play reactions on Snapchat of like all my favorite parts that I'm like tabbing and like she's so happy that I'm loving it because she's the only one out of the three of us who has actually read it before and I'm just, I am living. I've already like almost cried a billion times um, and it's so emotional. I'm living so. I'm going to actually take a break from reading. I've been reading practically all morning, like in between like YouTube and stuff. Um, but I'm gonna take a break to go do some writing. Um, and I'm gonna come back to this later. But honestly, I like don't wanna put this book down. I imagine that I'm gonna wanna stay up all night to read it, honestly. Like I have a feeling I'm not gonna wanna go to bed until this book is done, so. So um, I'm super excited. I'm loving this and I'm so, so happy that it's like living up to the hype so far. Like um, I always get worried when I read really hyped up books that I'm not gonna love it as much as everyone else, but um, I'm absolutely adoring it. So that's really exciting and I'm gonna catch up with you guys later, but I'm so, so excited for this vlog and all the halloween -y aesthetics I'm gonna have in it. I'm just, I'm living. So I'm gonna go do some writing now and I'm gonna catch up with you guys a little bit later when I get back to reading. Hey guys, so it's now 9.55, it's been a hot minute, um, I haven't really been vlogging today because I just really wasn't thinking about it and I was pretty much writing um, after I made that last clip, so I wasn't doing much reading and then it was after dinner and I just started reading right away. So I've been reading all night long um, and I'm on page 240, so I'm just over halfway through. Last time I updated you, I was on page 122. So like, I've read a sizable chunk and I've done the math. I can read the rest of this book in three and a half hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of a break to give my eyes a rest because I have a lot of books to read this week and I don't want to make my eyes sore on the first day of the, of the Jackathon. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break um, and just do something else. Yes, I've read a lot of this book and my thoughts are still the same as the last time. I'm obsessed with this book. The writing is amazing. It's so, so powerful. So many sad moments are just breaking my heart. Like, look how many tabs are in this book. This is like the amount of tabs that I have in a whole book. And this is only half of it. So like, 
damn. Um, I just bought tickets to go see The Hate You Give um, on Friday, the day it comes out. I'm so, so excited to so me and my friend are gonna go see that on Friday and just bawl our eyes out. I already know I'm gonna cry because I've cried um, a little bit during this one. I mean, I mainly teared up. Um, sometimes it takes a lot for me to cry during a book, um, but I've definitely teared up a lot. There's a lot of sad blue tabs in here, um, but I definitely started tearing up real bad during the trailer, so I know that seeing the movie is just going to make me sob and sob and sob. So, <sighs> this book is so good. I'm sending so many Snapchats to Julia, even though she's asleep just of my reaction. So she's gonna wake up to a slew of Snapchats from me because I just, I cannot. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna finish this book tonight. And tomorrow, I don't know how much reading I'm gonna be able to get done. I was expecting to be up later reading this, but I don't think I'm gonna be up that late, like no later than normal. So I'm hoping to wake up early tomorrow because my grandma is coming over for pretty much the whole day. So she's taken practically my whole day away from me from doing what I need to be doing, which is fine. Um, I'm really excited to hang out with her. We haven't done that in a while, but so it's a bit of an inconvenient time. It's okay. So, um, I think I'm gonna try and wake up early so that I can get some reading in. So the book I'm gonna pick up tomorrow is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This is for the challenge of a book to movie adaptation. I could have just doubled the hate you give up with that challenge, but I am trying to read as many books on my TBR as possible for the month during this one week because like I said, I do have so much nano prep. So I just decided to go with Coraline because I can read this in one go and I really want to watch the movie so maybe I'll see if my dad or brother want to watch this movie with me tomorrow. Um, I'm so excited. I have only read this book once. It was forever ago. I don't even know when I last read this book. I was probably not even in the double digits yet, you know? Um, but I love this movie. I watch it every single Halloween. I'm obsessed. So I'm gonna read the book, hopefully love it. Okay, so I think that's all that I had to update on for you guys right now. So I'm going to catch up with you guys probably tomorrow. No, I'll probably update when I'm finished the book because I'll probably have things to say. I almost dropped it, it's fine. <laughs> guys, I thought I would do a quick update for you. So it is currently midnight. So Jackathon day one's officially over. So I thought I would wrap up for you everything that I read today um, and then start my reading for day two. So I have yet to finish The Hate You Give. I am so, so close. Um, so I guess it's going to be officially done day two, but that is fine. So I'm currently on page 353. So I read 353 pages of this book today. So I'm super, super happy with that because I expected this to take two full days to read but I just flew right through it and I'm so freaking obsessed it's such a powerful beautiful story and I cannot wait to see how it all wraps up I'm also so stoked for the movie I have a feeling it's going to be such an amazing adaptation um I also started an audiobook today I started the Copper Gauntlet by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare and I got 11 minutes and 40 seconds into it um, I was planning on listening to more of it today. I planned to, like, clean my room and, like, do laundry, but I woke up later than I was expecting to, so I didn't have as much time and I just didn't feel like it. Um, so I only listened to it when I was doing the dishes earlier, so, I don't know. Um, maybe I'll listen to it tomorrow while doing my makeup, um, and stuff like that and just getting ready for the day. But, like I said earlier, not a lot of reading is gonna get done tomorrow because my grandma is coming over. But I'm gonna eat some Halloween Oreos and finish reading this book and I'm so so excited and I'll definitely update you guys once I finish it because damn I guarantee you I'm gonna have some things to say so okay so I'm not finished the book yet um it's 12 38 right, I'm on page 387 and something just happened and like I saw it coming because it's what always happens um but damn, don't mean it didn't hurt a little bit, you know? This world can be so, so cruel and unfair. And this is one of those instances, and I, I want to cry. Um, it's just, it's, it's so unfair. Um, but I feel like it is so right of Angie Thomas to write it this way. It's so important because, unfortunately, it's realistic. And if she had written it, the way that we want it to be written, it wouldn't be true. 
unfortunately, to our society, and that pains me to say. I'm gonna finish reading this book now because I'm in love and I'm heartbroken and um, I'm crying on the internet, so um, I'm just gonna go. It's 1.28 a.m. Wow. I just finished The Hate You Give. This book was everything and such a powerful, powerful book. I'm gonna stop rambling. I cannot wait to talk about this book in our live show. Hey guys, so it is day three of the Jackathon. I didn't vlog yesterday because um, I didn't really do any reading. Um, I got about, I don't even think I got even 20 pages into Coraline. So I decided to put it down and pick something else up because Coraline just wasn't working for me. I'm listening to the Copper Gauntlet and I am now an hour and 13 minutes in. I was listening to it as I was getting ready and everything. Um, but now I'm gonna start this book, The Wizards of Once by Cresta Cowell. Look at that spine though. Yes. I'm really excited about this book. I bought it last year and I wanted to read it last October. Never got around to it, so I'm gonna read it now and I'm really excited, so. There's that. I also have a hot chocolate because while it's sunny outside, it's not that warm and I'm also in the shade. So I thought I'd bring a hot chocolate. I'm wearing a nice sweater and I'm ready to do some reading. I feel very awkward being outside, um, but I did this a lot during the summer. I would like read or write outside and it was like so relaxing and nice to just be like not in the house. I'm just gonna sit out here and read for a while before I go inside to film some videos. I think I'm gonna stay out here for an hour. It's about till 1.30 reading. So I'm gonna go because it's, it's too loud. It's too loud out here to talk. <laughs> One sixteen, and I was going to read to 1.30, but I just feel like going inside now um, and getting ready to film. So I made it up to page 90, and I'm actually quite enjoying it. It's quite like adorable and funny. Um, so yeah, I'm that far into it. So not like extremely far in, but like a lot of these pages is mainly photos, and there's like some full spread pages. I'm having a good time. I'm definitely going to try and read a huge chunk of this later, maybe at halfway in. But for right now, I'm going to go inside, film some videos for you all, and then um, do some writing, unfortunately. So I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, so I'm going to do a quick reading update. It is currently 10.55. I think I've done yeah, I've done some reading since I last talked to you. So I'm still reading The Wizards of Once. Um, and I am 126 pages in. And it's like a really cute story. Obviously it's like a middle grade and I think it's meant for like the younger side of middle grade. Um, it's definitely not like an advanced story. Like it doesn't have like a more mature writing style. It's definitely for the younger side. Um, but it's still like a really cute little like endearing story and I am enjoying it um, and I'm uh, excited that I'm reading it. Oh, I probably update you on Coraline since I have it right here. Um, so for Coraline I ended up getting up to page 18. So yeah, not even page 20. Um, I don't know if I want to continue reading this one. We'll see. We'll kind of see how I'm feeling. Um, maybe I'll just like read like little bits every now and then. Um, I'm thinking that I want to try and finish this tomorrow because I want to before bed um, just sit here and read a huge chunk of this. This is like a fairly quick read if I just sit down and like burn through it because like I mentioned earlier there are like a lot of photographs and I'm hoping to get through a huge chunk of it 
maybe tomorrow um, finish it and then jump into either continue reading Coraline or jump into Hocus Pocus and the all-new sequel. Um, I don't know how well the rest of Jackathon is going to go because I have quite a busy schedule with Preptober and um, filming videos and getting them all ready for November because tomorrow I do have to film um, the rest of November's videos because I only filmed one today. Ooh, I bought a book today. I should share that with you. I thought I would share this because it's like kind of going with the Jackathon theme. I bought a new copy of The Hate You Give today. Obviously, I really loved it. I bought this because we went to Costco today to do some shopping, um, some like grocery shopping, and we always pass the book table, and I saw this, and it was only $13.50, and it's normally like $24, so I was like, you know what, I got to get it, so I did, because um, I wanted to buy it anyways, because I love Amandala, and so I wanted her on the cover, and I just, I love this book, and it comes with like exclusive content. Um, so it has photos, like stills from the movie, so we got some stuff there. We also have an interview, like a conversation between Angie Amandala and the director, George Tillman. Um, and there's also a little excerpt from On the Come Up that I'm definitely going to be reading soon because I'm so excited for that book. I need to charge my battery, um, but I'm going to read for the rest of the night and kind of just see where this goes. I'm also going to listen to more of the Copper Gauntlet. I'm currently, I think, two hours into it. I'm at two hours and 50 seconds into the Copper Gauntlet, um, so I needed to read more of that. They just got to the Magisterium. Super fun. So I gotta go because my battery's dead, so Ooh, peace. Hey guys, so it is currently 1.40 a.m., and I decided to just stay up and finish The Wizards of Once. So I finished my second book of the Jackathon, and let me tell you, I really enjoyed this book. It was a bit childish, like the writing and stuff like that, but I didn't realize how young of like a middle grade this book is. It was like laughing at some parts, it was very cute and adorable, and a very like enchanting story. And I didn't realize that there was a sequel to this book, but um, I was looking in the back and it said, look up for the next book in the series. And I was like, huh? So I went on her Instagram, and yeah, the second book came out in September. The sequel's called The Wizards of Once Twice Magic. And, um, and I was like, once I found that out, I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to want to read the sequel. Because, like, I'm enjoying this, but I'm not, like, loving it. And so it kind of depends on the ending. And let me tell you, that ending got me int intrigued. Um, basically, the story is told by a narrator and you don't know who this narrator is but the narrator lets you know that they are a character in the story so at the very end it's like I told you I was a character in the story have you guessed who I am yet you'll just have to like read to find out and I'm like what so I don't know who the narrator is and I'm intrigued and there's just there's stuff going on and I want to know what happened so I do think I am going to get the sequel I don't know when I'm going to get the sequel I think I'm going to give this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars because I really enjoyed it but it's not quite good enough to be a 4 it was just like a really cute story I feel like if I was actually a child I would be obsessed with this book so I am really happy that I enjoyed this book I thought it was going to be a bit more Halloween-y than it was, like a bit more like, I don't know. It, it, was, it was enjoyable. It is October 18th, it's 6.54pm, and I thought I'd give you a reading update. Um, I haven't vlogged today yet, oops. So I finished Coraline by Neil Gaiman today. It took me a while. I didn't do it all in one sitting like I wanted to, because I just, I needed a break. And so I like, did an Instagram live. Um, watch Shane Dawson's like finale in the Mind of Jake Paul series um, and then I finally finished it and if I'm being honest I skimmed the last like 60 pages like not like fully skimmed um, but there was some skimmage that's not a word I did some skimming um, but like I, I still read it it's fine um, I just, I was, I was getting bored. I love this movie, okay? I um, mean, I have read this book before, okay? So, like, keep in mind, I was so excited to read this because I thought I was gonna love it because I already have read and loved it. Um, but I guess I just had to be a child. I don't know. Like, again, with the same thing with Wizards of Once, is it read quite young. And I guess it read younger than I was expecting it to. I don't really know. It was okay. It just, it didn't have a couple of the things that I loved from the movie, like the Coraline doll, 
or Wyborn. I just didn't have some of those elements that I really enjoyed. So now I'm gonna go watch Coraline with my family, which I'm super excited to do because I do love the movie. It's my book to movie adaptation um, challenge book, so I need to watch the movie. And the next book I'm gonna read is Hocus Pocus in the all new sequel. So I'm gonna pick this up, I think, after watching the movie. If I could finish most of the part one section, like the then section, so the novelization of the movie, if I could finish most of this tonight, if not all of it, that would be wonderful. Like, look at this font. This is huge compared to a normal book. So, like, I'd like to be able to read all of this tonight. We'll see. Like I said, it's already 6.58. We're gonna go watch a movie. I might do some writing. So, it kind of depends on how late I want to stay up. I do want to try and get most of this done, at least finish it by like tomorrow afternoon so that I can start part two because that would be amazing if I could get this done by the end Saturday. Um, I can't stay up late on Saturday because I do work at 10 a.m. on Sunday so I can't stay up as late as I have been. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes but I would like for this to be done by the end of the weekend because then on Monday, it's our last day of the readathon, I do want to try and get as much reading done as possible like the Dreadful Taylor Prosper writing and the graveyard book. So that's kind of what's going on reading wise at the moment. Okay, so it's currently 1.02 in the morning in the a.m. Um, and I've been reading Hocus Pocus and um, I've been really enjoying it. I really love these chapter headers. They're like, oh, you can't even see that. Um, they're just like so cute. Let me find like a better one. The last one was a muck, a muck, a muck, and it has little broomsticks. So I'm actually really enjoying this. It's basically just the movie, although I do believe that they are adding some new things into the story. I'm really enjoying it though. I think I'm gonna stay up till 1.30 and just see how much of this I can get done because I do want to kind of wake up at like a decent-ish time tomorrow so that I can get a lot of reading done because I do want to try and get through most of um, part two which is the sequel. I'm currently on page 121 out of 197 for um, part one. So there's that much left of the novelization of the movie and like I said so far it's pretty enjoyable which is great because I, I had pretty low expectations. And I still have low expectations for the sequel because that's something brand new that this author just made up. Oh, so I, I, I do realize that I wear this sweater a lot. It's fine. It's cool. So it is now 2.07 a.m. And I decided to just stay up and finish Hocus Pocus, so I did. I really enjoyed it. Um, honestly, I think I would give it like a 4 out of 5. Like, I had honestly no problems with it. The only reason why it wouldn't be a 5 is that it just wasn't anything extraordinary. I have the same feelings about it that I did about the movie. I like the movie. I don't absolutely adore the movie. Um, like, I'm not like a die-hard fan of the movie, but I do watch it every year. Yeah, I'm gonna give it like a solid four out of five stars. Mind you, the way that I'm rating this is I'm gonna rate Hocus Pocus, and then I'm gonna rate the all-new sequel, and then I'm gonna kind of just give it like an overall rating. Right now, Hocus Pocus is a four. I don't know what um, the sequel, the sequel's rating is gonna be. I'm hoping it's around the same, um, so that I can just give it a four out of five stars, because that's what I would like to give it. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to head to bed now. I might listen to a bit of the Copper Gauntlet before I fall asleep. See you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so it is 3.54 p.m. on the 19th. What is this, day five? So I was reading some of the all new sequel earlier, um, but now I'm writing. But, um, I am on page 296. I don't know how many pages... That actually is within the story. About 90, 93 pages I've read 
Um, I'm enjoying it so far. There's a... It looks like there's going to be a female-female relationship, which I'm really excited about and I'm all here for. Um, two black main characters, super exciting. Um, yeah, it's good. It's really good. I'm super excited to continue with the story. The Sanderson sisters are about to come back, which obviously is what we want um, for the entertainment purposes. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get done today. I'm boy do i have some tea to spill do i have a story to tell okay so i got back a little while ago from the movie theater i saw the hate you give great movie i'm so happy with the film they did such a good job but it was kind of hard to appreciate the film it was kind of hard to enjoy the experience because of some annoying people in the theater I've never had an experience like this before at a theater and I really really wanted to share it with you guys because I'm so pissed especially because of what the movie is. I'm so mad. Basically we're in the theater having a great time. The movie starts. There's people in the front row or near the front row. Very near the front of the theater. Mind you we're in the very back row. The very back row. This isn't an unnecessarily small theater okay. It's a decently sized theater and they're in the front we're in the very back they're talking so loud that we can hear them we can hear their conversation we can hear what's going down and they just keep on talking throughout the movie not like consistently like not like just like blab 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 blabbing and like not stopping the whole entire thing there was times where they were quiet but it was consistent throughout the whole movie that they were talking loud so they were talking a lot they were laughing a lot and kind of like giggling between them like the two of them and so this girl in theater tells them to shut up, okay? Because you don't talk during a movie, okay? They give you a warning, they say, shh, like on the screen, they tell you not to talk, okay? It's like, it's, it's a rule of theaters, you be quiet. So um, a lady tells them to shut up. She could have said it a little nicer. Like whenever I tell someone to be quiet, I'm always like, hey, can you just, can you please stop talking? Can you please be quiet? You know, if they're really annoying me, I'm like, can you please shut up? Like, I, I at least add please in there. Um, but this lady just straight up said, shut up. And so the girls in the front turned around and they were like, F you. They actually said it, obviously. They were like, F you, no thanks. And um, me and my friend were just like, <sighs> wow. Um, so then that was kind of it. They kind of like just kept talking and kept laughing. And mind you, there were jokes in the movie. There was humor. Did they laugh at those parts? I don't know. They were laughing when it was serious. They were laughing at really inappropriate moments. I'll get I'll get to the worst one later, but they like I can't tell you exactly what moments they were laughing at because I don't recall. But they were laughing at serious moments. Like this is a movie about police brutality, Black Lives Matter, and you're freaking laughing when they're talking about guns and like they're like they were laughing during the protesting scene. Okay, like, excuse me, like, there's tear gas going on, there's, like, explosions, there's, like, I'm pretty sure they laughed at, like, the fight, like, there was a fire in a store, and I'm pretty sure they were laughing during that scene, and I'm like, one kid's bleeding, and the store's on fire, why the hell are you laughing right now? I'm, like, full-on belly laughing, I'm not just, like, kind of giggling as if, like, one of them made a joke to the other one, no, 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 full-on laughing, and I'm like... <laughs> Okay, I think you're drunk. I don't think- okay, so I originally thought they were drunk. But now I just think they're being stupid and they're like genuinely like disrespectful people. Anyways, so like they're laughing. No one else really tells me to shut up, I don't think. Uh, not that I remember anyways. And then kind of like in the last five minutes of the movie, um, I didn't see what happened. But I guess someone from behind them kind of threw garbage at them. Which I do have to admit wasn't the nicest thing but mind you these people were talking loudly laughing at inappropriate parts throughout this whole entire movie this isn't a comedy okay this is a serious movie and you're being very disrespectful so like I don't blame the people who threw garbage at them but like it still wasn't a very nice thing to do anyways so I guess something was thrown at them she stands up and starts screaming at this lady for throwing something at her 
like throwing it back at her saying don't you dare throw things at me what the hell's wrong with you like all this crap i'm trying to pay attention to the movie so i'm not like insanely like paying attention to her i'm trying my best to like watch the movie because like i paid 12.50 to watch this movie i'm really excited for it like shut up but it was really hard and i really wish that i recorded it so I could like put it in here or like I could like at least like I'm not doing the story justice okay there's no way for me to properly like explain this to you so you'd understand how intense this actually was like it was scary I've never seen this before so much swearing like I can't even explain like how badly she was screaming it was insane and so like I'm like Every time I, like, I've told this story, like, three times now, and I'm still, like, what the hell? So they start, like, being, like, oh, you want to fight me? Let's go outside and let's fight. And, like, all this stuff, like, talking smack. One of the girl leaves. I don't know if it was the one who was yelling or if it was the other one. But one of the girl leaves in a huff and goes to the door and stands outside. The other girl, like I said, I don't know if she was the one yelling or whatever. But the girl starts yelling and being really loud and... Literally the whole theater at this point is telling them to shut up. The whole theater at this point is telling her to get out. Because she was being disrespectful. She wasn't really paying attention to the movie. She was being extremely rude. So everyone was yelling for her to get out. And she's like, I'm not going to get out. She's like, I paid for this movie the same as you guys did. And we're all like, then why aren't you paying attention to the movie if you paid for it? Like, if you paid for your ticket, why are you wasting your money by talking? Like, and also, yeah. We also paid for this movie. We're trying to watch it and enjoy it and you're ruining it, right? Like, the hell? So it was like a very annoying thing. We literally could not hear the last five minutes of the movie. We have, like, we could see what was happening and it looked like it was a very emotional scene and I was excited to see it. You know, there was a Harry Potter reference in it from what I could see. I was super excited and I couldn't hear a, a thing that um, Star was saying because she was screaming. Like the movie ends, she leaves in a huge huff, like just yelling and like being so loud, like putting her middle finger up as she's leaving and being like super disrespectful. And actually before she left, before the movie actually ended, one girl was like, this is a black movie, let us enjoy it, right? And I was like, <sighs> like I felt so bad because this is a very important movie and a lot of the people in that theater were people of color. And I'm assuming this movie meant a lot to them, obviously, seeing themselves on screen like that, having this be, like, spoken about and represented in a film, um, like, it's, it's, it's important, it's an important thing, and, like, this is a huge movie. And so I'm assuming it meant a lot to them, and to have this whole experience ruined by two white people. Two white people. Mm. Mm. Guys, I feel so bad for them that that experience was ruined for them, because of these two inconsiderate girls. So she leaves the theater, movie ends, me and my friend kind of hang back because we don't want to have to like run into them when we leave. So we're like waiting, giving them time to like leave. And so we finally get out because I really had to pee. So we finally get out and there's huge commotion outside. First, it's a Friday night, theater's packed, like so many people there. And the manager's there and I think she was, either she was talking to girls who were annoyed by what was happening or she was talking to the girls who were actually screaming. I have no idea because it was dark in the theater, I don't know. I couldn't see the faces of the girls who were yelling. Because um, like I said, they were in the front and we were in the back. So I don't know if that's who the manager was talking to. I'm assuming she was because the girls looked very angry and like agitated. I don't know. Um, so it's huge commotion. Everyone's staring because this girl's making a huge fuss. I go pee. I come back out. It's kind of calmed down. I mean, my friend are like, do we complain? Like, we should probably say something. So Rochelle, my friend, goes up to the usher and just like, I don't, I can't, I didn't hear what she was saying because it, it was very loud in there, but she said something and the usher was like, were you in theater six? And we're like, yeah. She's like, okay. If you go over to the box office. There's a lineup. You can go there and get free admission. So, like, obviously a lot of people had complained. The whole thing was, like, like she knew what was going down. So we went into the line and we ended up getting a free admission for our next movie. So me and Rochelle are going to go see The Hate You Give again on Thursday because... Hello. <laughs> we want to see the end of the movie and, like, it's good because we're doing... I think we're doing our live show on Friday. So, like, that'll be good that I can, like, rewatch it right before the live show because I've forgotten so many details because I'm just thinking about these two girls that were like so disrespectful like I've never experienced anything like that before in a theater I was like 
gobsmacked. Um, so we got free admission for our, uh, one movie, and we also got free medium popcorn. Let me know down below if you guys have experienced anything like this before at a theater, because I certainly haven't. Like, I've definitely dealt with people, like, talking in theaters, and I've had to tell them to be quiet, but nothing to, like, this extent. Like, nothing has ever been this bad, and I never want to experience it again. Like, it was awful. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that story. Let me know down below if you've ever experienced anything like it, because damn, I'm shook. Oh my god. Guys, so it is October 21st, 11.06 p.m. I worked all day today. I worked from 10 to 6. And let me tell you, it was exhausting. Um, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I woke up too early. I didn't get enough sleep. And I'm exhausted. I didn't get that much reading done today. Um, but I'll update you anyways. Um, I finished the Copper Gauntlet audiobook last night. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to rate it yet. Um, I, I listened to it, like, pretty late last night, um, so I don't remember quite how it ended, so I think before I rate it, I need to read the last, like, page or something just to kind of, like, refresh my memory. I'm thinking, though, it's probably gonna be around a four, a four stars. Um, it's pretty good. I also just finished Hocus Pocus in the all-new sequel, um, so just a refresher. Hocus Pocus, the novelization, I rated a four out of five stars. Um, the all-new sequel... I didn't enjoy it as much. I think I'm gonna rate it maybe like a 3.5, 3.75, one of those, because like there were parts that I did really, really enjoy, but I just found that I wasn't as invested as I was throughout Hocus Pocus, and I feel like I just found my, I don't know, I feel like it dragged a little bit. Like I feel like it just like went on for far too long. But, like there were parts that was still enjoyable. I liked the ending. There is a female female relationship in this book which I'm really happy about and there is people of color which I'm really happy about so I'm glad that she decided to like modernize the world and the story and everything like that. And it did leave off on a cliffhanger which I'm assuming means that she wants to write another book. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I think overall um, the Hocus Pocus and the sequel together I think I'm gonna overall give it I think maybe like a 3.85. Um, it, was, it was a fun time. It was a fun time. But I just don't think it's worthy of a full four. Work today on my break. I did start reading The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, but I didn't get that far into it because I was just so freaking exhausted today that I just didn't want to do anything um, at all. So I got up to page um, eight. I did want to get around halfway through this book today, so obviously that didn't happen. So I don't think it's going to be possible for me to finish both Prosper Reading and the Graveyard book tomorrow, which are my only two remaining books on my TBR. Um, but I'm going to try. So just in case I don't get around to the Graveyard book, I still won't be able to complete all the challenges. Prosper Reading is for the challenge of read about something that scares you. Graveyard book is for read a book whilst wearing a Halloween or fall themed item. So what I'm going to do is tomorrow when I get dressed, I'm going to put on my Halloween ghost scarf. I'm going to wear it all day even whilst I'm reading this just in case I don't get around to the graveyard book. That way I can double this book up with that challenge and it'll still work out. I'm just going to pretend that I haven't read the first eight pages without wearing that Halloween themed item. I'm going to count it. I'm a host of the readathon. I can do what I want. Yeah, so that is my reading update. Hey guys, so it's currently 11 o'clock on the 22nd, the last day of the Jackathon. I meant to update earlier and I just never did. Um, I meant to have a reading day today, like strictly pretty much just reading so that I could try and finish um, at least one last book for the Jackathon. That didn't happen. So I ended up waking up a lot later than I meant to because like when I initially woke up I was just feeling too tired to exist so I went back to bed um, and then I finally got up at around like close to noon and so like I ate food and I watched some YouTube and then I was just like okay let's go read so I went to go sit outside and read um, I got a few pages done and then I was like nope I'm cold I'm gonna go back inside because I don't want to catch a cold and so I came back inside and then I ended up doing an Instagram live and writing. I didn't actually get any writing done. Um, and then it was, I watched more YouTube, and then it was dinner, and then I watched Hocus Pocus, and then I did some writing, which I'm about to continue doing. But I wanted to end this vlog. So I did get through a few pages, ow, um, of the Dreadful Tale of Prosper writing, but not much. 
um, I managed to get up to page 13. So um, that's unfortunate because I really wanted to finish this today. I really wanted to finish it for the Jackathon. I really wanted to read it this month. I still might allow myself to like read a little bit over the next week and a half. But my main priority is now going to be Renegades by Marissa Meyer because me and Alyssa are going to be buddy reading it and I am so, so excited. So I'm going to still try to read this because I've heard that it's the perfect like October spooky book and I, I don't want to wait a year to get to it. Um, it's just that first chapter was very, very slow and boring and did not capture my attention whatsoever. And I feel like that was the downfall with it. So it's fine. Um, but yeah, that was the Jackathon. So the first book that I completed was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This was for our group book. So I did that. Um, and that was five out of five stars. Then I read The Wizards of Once by Cresta Cowell. This was for the challenge of read a book with yellow, orange, or red on the cover, and that one was a 3.75 out of five stars. Then I read Coraline by Neil Gaiman, which was for the book to movie adaptation, and I was three out of five. Um, and then I finished Hocus Pocus on the all new sequel, which I think I'm going to give an overall 3.85 out of five maybe 3.75 I don't know somewhere around there so those are all the books that I read so that's one two that's four books no I finished the copper gauntlet what am I talking about I also finished the copper gauntlet which I think I'm gonna give around like a four stars to but like a lower four star I don't know I still remember how it ended but I think I'm gonna give that a four out of five so that was one two three four that's five books that I read which is fine I'm not displeased with that um, because it's more than I've read in a while, so I'm still pleased with that. It just puts me behind on my goal of 100 books for the year, which is fine. Thank you guys for watching my Jackathon vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys participated in the Jackathon. Let me know down below if you did participate, how many books you read, if you had fun, all of the details, what challenges you ended up completing, let me know. Also, let us know if you guys want us to do this annually, because I do think that we will be doing it annually, um, because I know that we had a lot of fun. Um, we're also thinking of doing a Christmas-themed readathon, which I'm really excited for, so that will be great. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not yet already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!